So before we begin today's video, I just want to quickly explain why balancing a battery can restore its capacity and its performance. So a lithium ion battery is 4.2 volts when full and about 3 volts when empty. And when you charge a battery, the charger is a dumb charger. It just throws voltage at the battery. It is the BMS on the battery that manages how the battery charges. Now let's say you leave your battery for three months and you don't charge your e-bike. The cells in your battery are going to lose voltage naturally. And they lose voltage at different rates. Especially if the battery is a bit older, it will lose voltage at different rates. So let's say you've left the battery sit for a while and now one battery One battery is down to 3.6 volts and this battery is at 3.9 volts. Okay. And now you want to ride your e-bike and you plug in the battery for charging. What's going to happen is you charge it up. This battery gets to 4.2 volts and is properly full. This battery gets to about 3.9 volts and is not full, but the charger turns off. The reason the charger turns off is if any individual battery gets too full, 4.2 volts, the BMS shuts off charging. That's because if this gets goes any higher, it's gonna damage itself. So the first cell to reach 4.2 volts shuts off charging. The BMS monitors that and shuts off charging. Well, now this battery is stuck at 3.9 volts. And no matter how long you leave it plugged in, no matter how much charging you do, it's never going to get back to 4.2 volts. It's stuck because this one will always get to 4.2 volts and shut down all charging. And the thing is, there's 50, 60 batteries in a e-bike battery. And so if you've got a bunch of them stuck below full, your e-bike has permanently lost capacity because a lot of the cells can never get back up to 4.2 volts. So that is why balancing a battery is important. So if we balance the battery before charging, if we get them both to 3.8 volts and then charge, they'll both hit 4.2 volts together and both will resume full capacity. Mm -hmm. So if you have a battery that you feel like is down on capacity or you have a battery that when you've charged it to full and you if you check the voltage, if the voltage is significantly less on the battery than what the charger is rated for, your battery is out of balance. So if you have a 56 volt charger for a 48 volt battery will charge to 56.6 volts when full. If it's only charging to 52 volts, 53 volts, and turning off, that battery is significantly out of balance and it needs to be balanced in order for the whole battery to fully charge back up to 56.6 volts, the full charge of a 48 volt battery. So, Bearing that in mind, let's uh, jump to the video and we'll show you the latest uh, balancer I just bought. So I bought a new balancer. Um, this will be for balancing e-bike batteries and my power wall and some other stuff. The last balancer I bought worked, but it was very slow. This one promises to be 10 amps. And the nice thing about this one is this is variable um, configurations from 4S to 17S. The previous one was specific for a 13S battery. And the, the problem with that is I, that means I can't use it with my wife's 10S battery and I can't use it with my Powerwall, which is an 8S. This can do all configuration of, of batteries between a 4S and a 17S. Um, so we're going to test this in a second. Now, the one thing that is concerning with me that is concerning me is if this really does do 10s. Oh no, sorry, if this really does do 10 amps, 
you shouldn't push 10 amps through regular balance wires. And they sent this roll of pretty thick silicone wire. And um, I mean, this is pretty nice silicone wire. Does it say what gauge this is here? Uh, 18 gauge. I mean, this is 18 gauge silicone wire that they sent with it to make your balance leads out of. And the balance leads on the actual e-bike battery is something like 26 gauge. Way, way too thin for actually 10 amps. But, I, you know, the last one I got promised 1 amp and it did 0.1 amp. So, I don't know if this really will do 10 amp. So, I have to decide if I'm going to push this through the stock balance wires or if I'm going to test it you know if I'm gonna build a test rig and see if it does 10 amps I don't know I might just wing it but let me make a decision on how I'm gonna test this and we'll get going okay I have rigged something up um, this is uh, an interesting setup but this is what I've built this battery is a battery this is a 10s battery no it's actually an 8s battery sorry it's a 24 volt battery that actually lives outside in a um, it powers some like fairy lights in a pergola outside I did a video years ago on building this it's in an, a waterproof enclosure and it provides power to a pergola in my garden and um, powers some string lights and some other stuff and this sits out in 105 degree weather and seldom gets charged or used and kind of abused and so I thought maybe this is a good one to balance so I went and grabbed it quick and let us uh, zoom in here. Okay, uh, you can see the lower cell is 3.6 and the highest cell is nearly 3.9. So this battery is out of balance. Um, uh, so, um, uh, so we do need to um, balance this battery. Um, what I have done is I have this breakout board. Let me move you down. I have this breakout board and it lets you convert from the 2 millimeter pitch to the 2.4 millimeter pitch and it has male and female and I am using it to um, bring the battery in and then send the battery out to the balancer. You can see the balancer is wired up here and I'm also able to take readings from the meter. Um, now normally I run everything through the meter but if this really does start pushing 10 amps, I don't want to run the current through the meter. That'll blow up the meter. By doing it this way, the, the balance current will run through the board and straight to the battery and we'll just be monitoring on the meter. Um, so if anything, I might blow up the breakup board um, or, you know, multi wire or something like that if this does do 10 amps, which I'm not sure it will, but if it does. Um, but the meter will be safe. The meter is just monitoring. It's not actively, it ha doesn't have any active current running through it. Um, now the, 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 this does actually have an on off switch and it is currently in the off position so it's not doing anything yet. So we are going to turn it on in a second and let's get you ready to see and uh, we'll turn it on and we will take a um, amperage meter if we start seeing some action. Um, if we start seeing voltages changing quickly, I have an amp meter here, and we will um, uh, uh, we will take an amperage meter reading if we start to see some serious amperage. Um, but here goes nothing. Let's turn it on, and either the my either the wires will melt. Um, if it does do 10 amps or if it does more like one or two amps, which is what I'm suspecting. I'm wondering, I think it might do 10 amps across all cells, not 10 amps per cell. Um, this wire is only good for one or two amps, not much more. So we will be uh, pushing the wiring if, we do, if this thing does go crazy. So let's see what happens. Turning it on, watching the voltages. I don't see any voltage changes yet. Okay, so we might have some action happening. Maybe it just takes a second to get going. 
but if I take my clamp meter you can see it's at zero amps and if I put it on this first wire here uh, you can't see that uh, it's recording one amp of current uh, It's recording one amp of current, and if I go to the second wire, it's recording 0.8 amps of current. And if I go to the third wire, point 0.3 amps of current. So there does seem to be some current flow. Um, let's go to the the last cell hasn't changed. It's these first few cells. That, I mean, this, you know, the second wire should be the lowest cell. It should be the one receiving the the most current. But it's yeah, it's getting about 0.8 amps. This first wire seems to be getting the most at 1.1 amps. So something is happening here. Um, something is happening here. It's a bit early to, to see obvious changes in the voltage, but something is happening here. Now, are these, are these high cells coming down? They, they are changing. Let's measure like six and seven here, the high cells. Okay, this third wire should be the is the highest one and it's okay it's getting 0.4 amps uh, second highest it's getting 1.1 amps so okay it's not a coincidence that it's not a coincidence that the seventh cell and the first cell are both getting 1.1 amps. I bet you the seventh cell has been opened to the first cell. And so number seven is powering number one. And number six is powering number two. I think those are those cells have been direct connected to each other in, in the box. That's what the box does. It connects high cells with low cells and lets the energy flow from the high cell to the low cell. So... I think this is working. I want to make sure there's no heat on this breakout board. There is not, so that's good. These wires are ever so mildly warm, nothing crazy. Again, one amp is, is fine for the for these balance wires, and that's what I was hoping. Um, I was hoping that we wouldn't see 10 amps per wire. That would literally be too much for these balance wires, but one amp hey one amp is actually a pretty good balance rate um, and uh, yeah this is interesting all right let's let's leave it running see what happens so it's about 24 hours later and uh, you can see battery status is now good uh, the voltage difference between the high and low cells is 0 0.02 volts. Everything's at 3.7 volts. This battery is perfectly balanced. So this active balancer actually did a pretty good job, and it is definitely faster than the last one. Um, I, again, I don't think these things are rated anywhere near what they claim to be rated at. We never saw it move 10 amps in a million years, but it did move 1 amp, and 1 amp is a decent amount of current. I can... I can live with getting everything done in 24 hours. So um, that's, uh, that's a wrap for this balancer. I think this will be the one in my arsenal. And again, the, conf the fact that it can handle any size string I need, um, all the way down from 4S, all the way from 12 volts to 48 volts to and beyond. Um, this, is, uh, this is the perfect balancer, I think, for what I need it to do.